too bad nobody likes you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little introductions. Uh, first, I'm Virgil Lashesky. That's who we're all here for, these lovely ladies. Uh, first up, our showrunner, um, who, who has us all on Team Fandress, even though she doesn't. Woo! It's a thing. Um, <laughs> next, um, our favorite cinnamon roll, even though it's up in, it's a little up in the air because she touched the goo. But uh, <laughs> Waverly Earp, uh, Dominique Probochopte. <laughs> and next, um, she plays a lesbian, not a unicorn. <laughs> in Vegas, are you guys getting any ideas about a way hot wedding? There are still two people here who were getting married, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! So, <laughs> so, I think we're all like really excited about season two. Um, and Emily, you have tweeted that you want to, quote, make things gayer. <laughs> her word, I would say, yeah. So like on a scale of one to gay? <laughs> no, but I guess like seriously, representation was obviously a big deal for you guys in season one. It's something you took very seriously. Um, how, how was that approach in season two? Like did you, <laughs> did you like make sure you guys were um, learning more about the tropes? Like um, I know I was trying to educate myself. I didn't know about Barrier Gaze um, in season one. And, but it was obviously something you were aware of, Emily being on Lost Girl. So I guess like how do you guys um, make sure you're aware or like always learning about representation? <laughs> I think for me it was a lot of uh, you guys. Like, just, just connecting with everybody on Twitter and Instagram and reading articles that people posted and listening to how you guys were reacting to certain things and if somebody would mention something I didn't talk about, I, I would look it up. So it was really like me trying to educate myself about what gets you guys going, what's important to you because like ultimately this is for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we were so fortunate. Yeah, every time I hear my voice, it's like weird. <laughs> like, am I right? I feel like I should talk like Waverly and then nobody would notice. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll try and be me, although it's a little bit more scary. Oh, there we go. Hello, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> okay. What was he saying? Something about something. Okay, you know. Um, Voices super sound really yeah, sound really great. Okay, no, uh, for me, I think we were, well, I felt really fortunate to have um, such a personal experience. And similarly, where maybe I didn't know, I wasn't as aware, like because of the show, because of, thanks to Emily giving us this gift of being able to play these characters, it was such an eye opener in such a direct way, which like, I'm kind of keep stealing your answer, aren't Steal I? it, it's fine. But, um, <laughs> but that more than anything, that's the reason why we're so lucky, is because we've had such a direct experience about it. And then coming into season two, I feel, you know, to, to expand on that, it's like, we 
I had this amazing whirlwind of an experience of seeing how everybody reacted to Way Hot and seeing how much it meant and it kind of reiterated the importance of caring for this relationship and that you guys have been, you know, wanting to see yourself represented in a, such a positive light. So how important that was, not only to you, but, you know, to the whole community and to everyone. So then coming into season two, it was just making sure that we still you know, took as much care as possible with these characters and played it as truthfully as possible, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, like, we all have our favorite, like, Way Hot moment or where we knew, like, oh, this is going to be, like, a big thing. Like, Way Hot is going to be big. Um, so I guess, what was the moment maybe for you guys, I don't know, Emily, maybe when you were writing or you guys when you were playing it where you are like, hey, this relationship is really going to be something special? I mean, as a as a big thing, like this is a big thing. I, it was I was never this was I had no idea. But, uh, really. um, but I think a big thing as far as an important relationship was when they had a squabble in the police cruiser. You know where where Nicole ro rolls up and just like you can't walk all the way into town. Um, I think because there was something about having characters that had friction where you're like. Okay, this is this is not just like a surface level flirting, but this is gonna go to another level of figuring out why is there so much tension. So it was a moment of conflict for me. Yeah. Really good answer. <laughs> Mine was probably earlier because it was when it wasn't when I was writing it, but it was when I was watching the dailies of Dom and Cat do um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. There's like the scene in shorties. <laughs> Like, like, Waverly gets a beer all over her shirt and then she has to take it off. Um, and like, it sounds ridiculous. I don't know if you've tried to recruit people or talk about it and you find yourself talking out loud and you're like, and the character's name is Hot and it sounds a bit much, but it's just enough. Um, so honestly, when I was watching the dailies of these two do it, I was like, oh my god. And like, I think I did take you guys to the side and I was like, so this might be a thing. I just want you guys to know about it that if we do it right, this chemistry is just incredible and it was just so joyous. Like that scene could have been so ridiculous and kind of um, predatory and it wasn't any of those things. It was so great. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> did, you, did, did you, was like this in the vicinity of your thought when like you first, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, but like, like what it's become. Oh is my god, not, even, of... not in a okay. million years. Like I'm not even just being falsely humble. Like, yeah. um, not in, like look at all you people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I talk about this a lot, but especially for us, like going into second season is so different, and you have to be really careful because it's a lot of pressure. But first season, it was like all of us in weird costumes running around the woods of Alberta. <laughs> really weird and really crazy, but then to see, honestly, you guys respond to it was just, I thought it was special and I knew these guys were incredible, but just to see this response, <laughs> um, you've changed, baby. No, I'm just um, no, no I, I'm not, I'm not just saying that, I've never seen anything like this, so, yeah. Okay, okay, I don't know where you live, but I'm coming over. <laughs> Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, and because because of what and how important Way Hot did become, you guys did something like really unprecedented, and you gave away the ending that Nicole and Waverly were both going to survive the season. Um, I've heard a little bit, Emily. You've talked about like why that was important for you to do, but I was wondering what Kat and Dom thought um, about that. Like when she said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna tell everybody that you guys survive." I mean, was it like a relief? Like I don't have to. <laughs> hide it anymore. Or... I, 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 for me, I was like, well, of course, well, yeah. why did we get it? And I don't want to be like so dense, but I just, I was like, well, yeah, why, why would we break characters? Why would we, like, I was like, for you! <laughs> Sorry. 
about to ramble and I'm glad I did. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was just, that was when I started learning about everything that had been happening um, in the media over the past year with all of the very, your gaze trope and everything. And so the minute I started kind of reading up on that, I was like, it's really important that we do because I wanted you guys to be able to hold on to it and not have any fear and be able to watch the, the season um, and just completely like, let go with like, all your heart. And that's clearly what's happened. And I'm just, yeah, so grateful for that. So then tell us all the secrets about season two. Did they not no, but I guess what can you tell us? I know you're not going to tell us a lot, but what can you tell us about season two? Oh, wait, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's so good. Oh it's literally the best thing you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> season two just by virtue of the fact that it's season two which is like there's so much hype to lay in season one where you're like here are all the characters and here are the crazy rules and here's the curse and the revenants and Doc Holliday and are you guys gonna watch this? It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> Look over here! It's uh... Um, Take off your shirt! Good. <laughs> um, but this year hopefully you love the characters and you know the situation and so you just we are able to take off like a rocket and we already know kind of the relationships between all the characters so we can just expand on that and I say this all the time about this cast it's so strong um, that I can throw any two characters together and just get something that's marvelous and really unexpected really yeah. interesting rivalries really interesting um, friendships and complicated stuff so Oh my god, these guys are so committed this year, though. Like, it is so cold in Calgary, you guys. And on, these cool. guys, and Melody's there right now. I'm just so proud of them and how dedicated they are. So I think you see that in the performances. Um, Mel wishes she could be here, but she's yeah. just working like a dog. Because yeah. obviously she's laying on a herb. And she's gotta go <laughs> um, you yeah, say, ah, uh, but you want her to be working. But you want her to be coping. <laughs> I mean, look, we have a million cliffhangers in season one to answer, so yeah, lots of stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, go. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, oh, Sorry, go. Yeah, no, please. No, I just feel, to, to bridge off of what Emma was saying, I just feel like this season feels deeper. Mm -hmm. It's like we got through a lot of layers, and now everyone's just a bit raw. -er. That's what this season feels like. It's like everyone kind of got scraped along the floor, and now we're seeing, like, True colors come out and and secrets and and you know what well, secrets I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but things like part like like darker uglier sides of these characters that just make them so much more complex and human and lovable because we can identify with that but still fun I promise but still fun <laughs> and it's a great time yeah what about way hot what happens with way hot nobody cares but I'm just gonna ask <laughs> how gay is it. <laughs> Um, do you want to do some fan questions? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, I, I guess. I want to do. How do we want, want to do it? it? Do we want to do like a lineup? Um, I don't know. Did we plan? No, but I was supposed to plan it, and I did it. We answered everything. Bye. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll go with it. Just yell. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Allison. Oh, there you go. Why do I sing it? <laughs> um, so I want to know if there's like a story in the plot that you can give away or tease about on how Nicole, uh, how her hair gets cut short. Does oh. like, like, <laughs> Evil Waverly cut it off in a fit of rage? <laughs> Basically, I didn't want to wear braid anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, it hurts my head, I can't act. Like, 
you're like fine. <laughs> I'm not I'm not high maintenance. No, but I just like felt like I I really wanted Nicole like the braid felt so like and I wanted I wanted her to be a bit sexier. Like I, <laughs> let her hair down a little bit, so, yeah. It was, I, I asked if it was okay, I was like, I kind of want to change her look a little bit. Like, no one wants sexy Nicole, just... <laughs> but okay, we'll try. Oh, someone way back there. Can you yell? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Such a good question. <laughs> Don't know why I'm standing still. <laughs> what I'm done. It's really challenging, right? Especially, I would say, going into a new season. Like, everybody has different expectations about what they want that relationship to be. But at the same time, and everyone's going to hate this. <laughs> this, is, this is when you won't buy me a drink. Um, it's a drop. Oh, you're so nice. Um, it's a drama, right? Stuff has to happen. And I also think it's not a real relationship if there aren't challenges and them really trying to get to know each other as people. One of them cuts her hair, it's a whole thing. Um, it's hard. I think the thing is, without being too writerly about it, you really have to be respectful to character. I think when people make choices, whether they're good or bad choices or have arguments, they have to be in the characters that Nicole and Waverly really are, and I like to think those characters are three-dimensional women, so I just try to think of them as real people. It's in the same way I say, like, not every relationship is the same, not every fight is the same, not every challenge is the same, so... Um, I think you have to hope that they're fighting for each other, even when things are hard. follow the cast on Twitter. We know that Emily is a very has a very quick wit, <laughs> is extremely creative, and is also very protective of her cast and crew. Yeah. What, <laughs> my question to you ladies, uh, what have you personally learned from her? Yes. Oh. Here is your $50. <laughs> It's a hard question because it's gonna make me cry. Um, no, just <laughs> seeing through your emotions. Um, I was saying, oh god, no, don't make me cry because it'll be really awkward. Okay. Um, no, but I was saying earlier to somebody, I don't know who it was, um, that it's funny how, like, for you guys, you feel, oh, God, okay. Is <clears throat> that, like, this relationship and this show came at a really important time for you. I feel like this show came at a really important time for me as an individual as well as, you know, representing this character, and it's taken me on a huge journey, and if it wasn't for Emily taking a risk on me and realizing, no, for real, it's like taking this really random girl from England and being like, let's put her in her show. Um, and she, Emily cares about her work and the people around it so much that you can t I think you can tell in the writing and in the way that we just love the show so much because we wanted like, to make her proud and you know, it's like what she's taught me, that we're gonna get there. Um, <laughs> is that if everybody has a common goal and it starts from the root, you can make something really special. And if you keep the right mentality and keep pushing it out, you you honestly can do something that you know just going to change a lot of people's lives. And she's changed mine, she's changed yours, and she's kind of the best. So. Uh... I'm 
make mine really, really quick. One uh, thing to add on to all the things Dominique just said, because it's totally like changed our lives, um, is uh, I think how uh, uh, important it is to have characters who are ugly, and like that ugliness is is beautiful because it's so much more real than like we live in this strange world of media and beauty and everything's perfect and I think what I love about Emily's work and working for um, a female showrunner in particular is that um, it, it, it shows you just how important like darkness and ugliness and like deep characters are that they don't have to be beautiful and pretty and fun all the time because it's not really real life and just like how powerful it is to, to take that risk and because it creates things like this. So. We, we all know how smart Emily is, we all know how funny she is, but like what always impresses me and what is 100% true is her heart, and she's very genuine, and I think that's very good. So a question that's really been preying on my mind. The way that I got my friends to watch my Nona with me was by saying, oh my god, this show reminds me so much of Buffy. Yeah. I never heard of it. <laughs> We have a lot of fun uh, as we watch comparing the characters to their Buffy equivalents. Right. The only one we had any difficulty with was Officer Hot because he's just so emotionally well adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> the best that we could come up with was Oz. And oh. we know the way that Joss Whedon would deal with an emotionally well adjusted character is by turning them into a werewolf. <laughs> Which honestly made me really afraid for Hot's cat. <laughs> Buffy and the L word, we've seen two other lesbian owned cats die of unnatural causes. So, I was just hoping you could comment on whether we need to start hashtag bury your pussies. <laughs> someone not ask me that exact question. <laughs> I've already answered it. <laughs> Look, I'll back any hashtag you want. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to the live tweet this year. I'm like, <gasps> so, um, <laughs> yeah, Nicole's cat. <laughs> That's it is an honor to be compared to even, like, Joss Whedon's pinky finger, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deflecting. Sing something. Sing something, damn it. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, no, hi guys, it's Dana. Um, so. Dana and Oh, yeah, well. Um, first of all, big shout out just to all the no chillers. Yeah! And my question for you guys is. How do we, as an audience, as fans, keep the momentum going for you? Because we know that the first season, it was kind of like a sleeper, and we, you know, got this by the skin of our teeth. And how you did. did. Yeah. How you did. did. So how do we make this a juggernaut oh, for season two? Such a good word. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like hashtag bury your pussies is going to get <laughs> Post is here, maybe just leave with that on the front page. Um, Fake news! No, honestly, guys, this fandom really got a second season. I mean, really, it has, it was incredible and it was undeniable and it was both polite and terrifying, which how I like all my women. How I like all my women. Um, we have some fun stuff coming up. I'm looking at Allison, I have no idea if I'm allowed to announce this, except I'm going to. We are going on Netflix. Like, yes, you can, and I'm gonna sit with you and you're gonna watch it. 
Um, but honestly, continuing to support it on social media platforms, um, all this cosplay coming to the conventions is huge for us. Um, Sci-fi, just tell them you like it and you will be displeased if it goes away. Um, Keep on doing what you're doing, spreading the word. It's huge for us. What it's about awesome. up in Canada? And I feel like even I can see since even the end of the first season, I feel like you are doing the work and more people are watching it and that means the world to me. And us. Thank you. Okay, so are you guys able to tell us yet in what capacity we'll see Willa and Bobo again? You will see both, maybe, in some capacity. <laughs> but we have some fun new characters this year, and one of them is here, and I'd like to introduce her. <laughs> she's not that easy on the eyes, but just bear with me. I'm not going to tell you who she plays, but she's an addition to our cast that we are super pumped about and we really love. Her name is Tamara Duarte, and she's right there, and we're going to make her stand up. for season one, can we get it for season two? <laughs> Maybe? Wink, wink. Since okay. I gave the guarantee that you two wouldn't that die guy. in season one. I feel like it was really off book for a writer to tell everybody that because we really needed it in 2016. Um, I'm very aware, I'm very aware of the importance of these two characters. Um, and their existence on the show and how we treat them. And that's what I guarantee you, that I am always aware of how I can just, to, just to expand on that, like honestly, we have the best writing team in terms of like, I just never have any fears that, you know, they're so aware of all of the importance of LGBT representation and just representation in general and just, I, I personally, I don't know about you, but I literally have n no fears at all. So if I don't, then you shouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no, I just want to know, I think we all know the answer, but do chicks? <laughs> <laughs> do chicks? Obviously. Yeah, of <laughs> Yeah, and I think there's a lot of other Klexicon guests that are here that I know people would maybe like to see on season three or... I just saw a picture that you tweeted, it's really great. Uh, is there anybody here who hasn't seen the show? It's no shame, I'm just curious. Is there anyone who's like, this is an intro for me? Shame them. That's great! <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Yeah, so I just were, was wondering if you were pitching to any other Klexicon guests while you're here for season three. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there's like a lot of other guests here that people have like tweeted at you that they would like to see on Wine and Art. Uh, so, are there any other guests like... Sarah! There are so many incredible actresses here that I would definitely have, have on my hand. If I could. And I will. I will get them. <laughs> One way or another. The world peace may go. Hey. Hey. Um, so I had a question from a friend um, who wanted to know more about the Road to Purgatory Tumblr. Oh, yeah. And um, oh, yeah. so what made you think of doing that? And um, I, for Dom and Kat, what do you think of the entries and the Tumblr, and will it continue for season two? Ooh, good question. Um, so that was such a huge fun hit, and really a shout out to Digi Digital Howard, who kind of um, did that with us. So for those who don't know, this was like a sort of gift to the fans we did after the show, which was Nicole Hott's diary about 
moving to purgatory and kind of exploring purgatory and uh, meeting this character called Waverly Earp. Um, we definitely have something super fun planned this year. Uh, and it involves both of these two characters. Uh, I guess this is for maybe for Kat. Um, one of the moments that everyone really liked in season one was the scene between Nicole and Winona, and we got to see uh, Nicole outside of Wayne. Um So now that Nicole has been made a part of the Black Badge, um, can we expect maybe seeing some more scenes like that? There is a scene that I'm shooting on Thursday that is like my, one of my favorite scenes I read this season, and probably for my Nona. It's amazing. It's like, great. <laughs> And I hope I don't screw it up, so we haven't shot it yet, but it's it's like so brilliantly, brilliantly written and so fun, and I love working with Melanie. Melanie's like, you guys know, she's incredible, and is working so hard this year, and just what she's giving to, to us and to, to you guys is, is beyond words, but like, getting to work with Melanie is, because she's surprising and she, she does things that, that you're, you're not expecting, so as an actor, it's like, a, you have to be so on your toes with Melanie, and it's, I can't wait. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. I guess speaking of, of Winona, like one of the best things in season one was the whole oblivious Winona thing. To, yes. to, 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 so um, I, I don't know how much you can tell, but um, are we going to see Winona maybe have some thoughts on Way Hot in season two? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She definitely has some thoughts. I mean. <laughs> I think that the thing that is really fun is that Winona is very protective of Waverly, so regardless of the fact that she is very friendly with Nicole Hot, um, she's protective of Waverly, so there's a real question of like, is anyone dating Waverly good enough for Waverly? And uh, we, sh we shall see, but there's some really good stuff. I think Winona's oblivious about some other stuff this year, which is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I love the way that um, you've written the, the relationship between, you know, how, how um, Winona views our relationship. Because it's, like you say, I think it's not so much about the fact that it's Nicole. I think it's more the fact that, you know, we've just got to the point where we've really solidified our relationship. Having come, you know, she's come back to the town and we've just been working really hard on seeing eye to eye and being sisters and getting over the fact that she's the heir and not me. Um, and all that kind of thing. And then finally we've got to a place where we're really good and then obviously at the end of the season, you touch the goo. some horrible guy tells me I might not be enough. So that's like for me, obviously that that idea of maybe my identity is lost a little bit is changing. And then Winona is like, oh, hang on a minute, like we were really, you know, getting somewhere with this, and now there's somebody else to take into the picture um, and take under consideration. And I think no matter who that would be, even if she is the most amazing, you know, amazing badass woman, it's still gonna spark something off in Winona and. No one's good enough for Waverly. Like, it's like that thing when you love someone, it's like, no one's good enough for them. Even if they're the best person in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think Nicole has some, um, she may have some opinions about Winona, too, right? Like, they're different people. They're different people. So, without saying anything, I just think, yeah. it's complicated. They're three strong women, so, yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh my god, it's evil hot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I know that you guys aren't going to give any spoilers, even though I had some really deep character searching questions. And I'm yeah. not saying that I'm looking for this information for fan fiction or any reason. <laughs> but since we are in Vegas, and we know that the bubblegum sake did not work out well, um, what would Nicole and Dominique punch? Nicole and Waverly order at a bar in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. What was the, what was the, the bubblegum, did you say something about bubblegum? Bubblegum was Saki. Saki, do you not remember? It was oh, pretty exciting. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what was the word? Don't worry, Kat, it's going to be on Netflix in May. <laughs> that Waverly in season one would order something different to Waverly in season two. Ooh. Good answer. Waverly huh? <laughs> has such an insane season. Dominique, 
is incredible. Yeah. It's such it's such a tour de force, but it is just like a roller coaster. Yeah, so like nice. every episode is like, what's Dominique's special skill this episode? It is. It's amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. She used to be in like London's uh, theater scene, yeah. very predominantly. No. Do you guys know this about Dom? Yes. Yeah. This girl has many, many, many talents, which um, she gets to showcase brilliantly this season. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, awkward. No. Um, thank you. What would Nicole sweet. order? What well, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I feel like Nicole's alcohol just gets harder and harder. <laughs> Last year, what I love about this season for Nicole is last year, everything was kind of, like, kind of she was just kind of nice, like everything felt really good for Nicole. And I think this year, it's just things get a little more frustrating, a little like more upsetting, and she the, the, the barrier of nice, I think she can only hold it up for so long, and I think, so that's, that's not really a drink, but it's <laughs> like just the content of alcohol increases. So maybe they, yeah, maybe it's similar for both of them, like, Probably in season one, Waverly would have drank like an amaretto and coke. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like nice sweet tooth. And now tentacle goo. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's just pure vodka shots all the time. <laughs> and I do want to say something about Netflix. And I mean, the last time that Emily told us a date was in New York against Allison's wishes, where she said that we'd get the DVDs by yeah, December. Yeah, I don't even know if DVDs exist anymore. I, I, I don't know what's happening with the DVDs. I'm gonna start burning them myself. I'm just like, Can I just say that my dad wanted to buy the DVDs yeah. for Christmas, and he went on, like, boxset.com, and he thought it was real. And I was like, Dad, I can't get you the DVD. I'm really sorry, I don't think it's out yet. He's like, no, don't worry. I, he's not American. Like, he's like, no, don't worry. Like, I've got them. And they turn up. You should see them. They're like the most pirate thing I've ever seen. He's like, oh, I spent like a lot of money on these. I was like, well, good for you. I told you that we could get them. I think it was all in cheap Chinese. Oh, I know, sorry. <laughs> Hello. There's someone with a mustache. Hi. Right. Uh, that kind of lady, you rapscallion. By, by the way, uh, Tim texted me straight after being like, oh my god, that's the best thing I've ever seen. I, um, I do my best, Tim. I do what I can. Um, so, now that there are more people in the Scooby gang, um, uh, who will dock, like, uh, you know, attached to, like, uh, he has other friends, but, like, is he, in, you know, is he become friends with Cat or Dom? Like, is there a better relationship between those characters? He seems to know a lot about them even before um, Melanie does, so, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that's really fun about Doc, is I think he's lived for so long that even though he's sort of old-fashioned, he's not easily shocked, you know what I mean, or offended. He kind of is a live and let live kind of guy, love is love kind of guy, so that certainly continues, but he has some really fun relationships this year with people who are unexpected. Yeah. It's a complicated relationship with his hat. <laughs> okay, so building off the Tumblr, because a lot of people didn't see it, oh, I think a lot of people didn't see it. Right. In season one, we got a lot of the, the Earp girls, their backstories. Season two, do we get more of Nicole's backstory? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you do. Yes. It's crazy. <laughs> Hello, a super Hi. Hi. Um, so, we got a taste of um, Dom doing Waverly's, uh, being in character as Waverly earlier. I was wondering if you guys could improv a oh way hot scene. <laughs> Like a jumping off point. Uh, 
the scenario is. There are sex a god. <laughs> you guys accidentally got married in Vegas. <laughs> oh man, this is like a. Oh, I just got so married. Literally, I don't think I've ever been so nervous in my life. <laughs> Honestly. Um, I, 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 think, I think, I think we would be like, Vegas is so exciting, it's so great, look at all these people, it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> We really are professional. Oh, I was, I was ready to continue. I think I'm pretty. I really like this character, actually. Here, <laughs> sleeping spell. Sleeping spell. <laughs> That's the Oscar. That's the Oscar. That's the Emmy. No, uh, you guys haven't been to a lot of cons, but this, so this is like a, one of the big ones where you get to meet fans for like the first time. Um, I guess, did, have you guys had any experience with the fans that was like really surprising and really like touched you, I guess, at the con? So many. Um, I think for me, and I, I've said this before, it's like the letters where people are, or when people come up in person, even this morning, and say, this show has meant like something huge for me, or it helped me come out, or it helped me. One girl today told me that helped her with her relationship with her mother, like watching the show, and it helped just open a dialogue between them. And I think that's like the most rewarding thing because when you're an actor, you're, it's like you're acting into this black hole. Sometimes I do auditions, and I want to be like in the middle of it, be like, "Is anyone watching this? If you're watching this, please call my agent, and tell me you saw it." But um, but you know, sometimes you can really feel like that. I think coming from, we, we both did a little bit of theater, it, you get that immediate audience response, but on TV, it's like there's it's just the crew. And um, this, like, this has been the, the most rewarding, the best thing that's ever happened to me or my career, but like me as a person, because I actually feel like I've been given a gift of being able to do something good with what I'm doing with my life. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, so many. I just, I, the fun thing for me is, but it's also like vaguely embarrassing, is I feel like a bunch of us kind of know each other um, from Twitter and stuff like that. So it's so incredible to come to these events and meet some of you face to face. It's incredible. Um, one thing I think I want to talk about, just given the nature of the con really fast, is one thing that really matters to me, given the year, is and just maybe the landscape right now, is so many people came up to me today and said, I really want to write, or I really want to create, and I want to tell my own story, and I, you know, I want to tell an LGBT story, or a female story, or what have you story. Um, and I'm going to talk about this in my writing workshop, but I want to say, like, now is the time. Like, better now than ever. I really want you to know that. Like, It's not the half a corona I had and no dinner. But, um, you know, art is really important and it's hard to talk about like art and tentacle goo in the same sentence, but I'm going to. Um, this room is proof that there's an audience for the stories we want to tell. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So don't let anybody tell you that there's not an audience for the stories we want to tell. Because here we are. And we're all going to go out and we're going to keep telling our stories. We're gonna keep watching our stories, and that's how we're gonna win, whatever that means to you. Okay? Yeah, 
everyone. And we actually couldn't decide on uh, the taglines. We had so much fun with them. We have three. So we're doing one this con, and then we're going to force you all to come to other cons. Can the other two? But this one is kind of a fun inside joke because you guys are the airpers. So this one says, uh, so many demons, so many donuts, so little time. <laughs>